Forty percent of people don't have internal dialogue. So really? Really? I, I wish I had less. Yeah. Like so our they, friend David, so he yeah. doesn't have internal thoughts. That's why he just yeah. has external mouth. <laughs> Is there an Eastern way to treat BPD? Yeah, hit harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not. Uh, I'm prescribed. Probably gonna start taking meds. No. No, don't take meds. I take Western a lot meds. of medication. And I wish I never come did. I'm not taking like schizo meds like you. Oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Careful Boys. Uh, Jeremy had a special request. He wanted to go over Bart's ailments. <laughs> <laughs> Bart went to Asian Bart bro. went to a, a Santa Monica brain scan, and they were like, "Man, this fool's fully re re <laughs> re re." <Yeah. laughs> Fully so wait, wait, time out. What made you, how old, this was recently that you're like, this is, uh, yeah, I guess like adulthood recent. So in, in starting when I was a kid, I knew I had like some things. Because in junior some high, because in junior high, I would, get in, I would get in hell of trouble. And then, but I always did good like in person. Like if, if they're like, hey, I'm gonna teach you this thing in five minutes and I'm gonna test you right away, I did good. And then I had a really good assistant principal who believed in me because he would see those moments. Um, but then if you left me alone long enough, then I would get in trouble or whatever And then so he was the one that was like hey instead of kicking him out. Why don't we bring in like the district? Uh, school psychologist to see what he has and then we can try to um, Like cater or like I guess adjust to him rather than just kicking him out because he was like You can tell that because my I was raised by a single mom So you could tell that it'd probably go even worse. It's called special needs, special needs. <laughs> um, So the school psychologist said that I had ADHD and OCD. This was back in 1997, because I was like 13 or 12 or whatever at the time. And it's so always knew I had those things. That means it wasn't um, a trend back then. <laughs> it wasn't a trend. Um, people didn't really know what that stuff was. And then in my adulthood, uh, my wife Gio, she was like, I think I got some shit too. So she was looking up like these brain scan places and there's this guy, he's a neuroscientist, uh, he's a professor at UCLA, and he has this thing where he attach, uh, attaches electrodes to your brain, and he can kind of read like the activity in different parts of your brain. Cerebro. Stupid. What's cerebro? What is that? Keep going. <laughs> and then, um, so we both got it scanned, and then for her, because like, they can scan a bunch of things, like when, when you're more productive as a person, what type of things occupies your mind? Are you more logically driven, emotionally driven, creatively driven? Like they can get diagnose a whole bunch of things on your brain. And then so, um, it, it, for her it was, she's not a morning person, she's most creative at night. Like she, like all these things that she always felt about herself, she's like, holy shit, it was validated because you don't really tell them and they just scan the, and the professor tells you. For mine, he was like, he's like, let me show you something. So he showed me, <laughs> showed me my brain, he goes, this is a person that is, uh, I think was a 30 year alcoholic <laughs> who's also borderline like dementia. And then he was like, and this is yours. And it looked identical. He goes, your ADHD is fucking crazy. Holy shit. And, Cause there's like, there's like <laughs> hyperactive places on my brain and then just straight like blackouts. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. That's and then, the ecstasy. Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, but then what he sure. said about me was, which is super true, he goes, you're the most creative in the morning, and then you wake up with a bunch of cortisol, so you feel like you have to do something, like you have to have your hardest task in the morning to feel good. I was like, oh shit, I was like, maybe that's why I naturally like working out in the morning, because like, as soon as I can like get over that hump, then the rest of the day I feel, I feel chill. How, how much was the service? It's it wasn't too bad, maybe like 200 bucks for the first reading, but then it costs a lot to keep it going. So mm. to help you fill in the other parts of your brain and to get more connected, you have to come in regularly and they put these electrodes on your brain and you play this game. It, when this game is fucking weird. Like there's this dragon <laughs> that's being controlled by your brain with no joystick. What the fuck? And you have to fly this dragon through like holes and hula hoops and shit. And the more you want the dragon to fly, the more it will crash. So if you're like, okay, I'm gonna fucking kill this shit, every hula hoop, and the dragon starts going like this, you're like, what the fuck? So it's teaching you to tap into your kind of your subconscious, or I, I think maybe they call it like beta brainwaves or whatever. So when you're kind of just go like, 
Kind of like if you're too thirsty, the dragon will sense it. But if you're like, <laughs> but if you like neg the dragon, if you're like, yo, fuck this dragon, the dragon, yo, <laughs> that the dragon all of a sudden starts like going through the hula hoops. It's a female dragon. Starts the body. <laughs> so you kind of have to play. So it's teaching you. Gotta you play hard to get. Yeah, so you gotta play hard to get, and then it, and then you extend. You can you like can cruise five minutes, and next time you try to do ten huh. minutes. Who did better minutes. at the game? You or Gio? Oh, I don't know, but it was a it was a really really interesting game. This sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want it. And they put like a bike helmet on them, and they're like a TV. They're like, you don't need to control it. It's just a video playing of a dragon. <laughs> And then the, the ADHD test. And now he has a timeshare. No, the, and the ADHD test was cool because um, if you guys thought, if I, this will probably ruin it a little bit, but what you think it's measuring, it's also not measuring. Ah. So like you're doing this test and you have a mouse or whatever, and you think it's telling you to like click these crossword puzzles or whatever, but what the mouse is also uh, measuring is how fidgety you are in between tasks. But you don't ah. know that. So later on, when he brings oh, out the chart, he's like, you know, in between spoiler every- Spoiler alert! Between every, now, now we know! Now I'm not gonna fidget! Now I'm fucking locked in when I take this! Between every answer, you're fucking touching the scrolling thing, you're fucking going like this! Whoa. And it's like, so like the chair's measuring you, the screen's measuring your eye movement, it's measuring all kinds of shit, like how fidgety you are in between every single task. Does that worry you though? You have a- 80 year old alcoholic brain? Or like what? 30. 80 year old. Sorry, 30 year old, 30 year old. A little bit, but then also I feel like it's because of that, it's helped me find some success in YouTube and then like the alternative career paths. So I like, feel like. Like you lean into your symptoms? A little bit. So like it's help. It's helpful having Gio. Like she wrangles me a lot. So I, mm -hmm. I feel like me and her make a good, a good pair. Because my ADHD is. Like as soon as I. Um, we shut down Barbell, and I was like, oh fuck, I do need to replace that income with something. So I started brainstorming, like what else What else can I do? I was like, maybe fitness apps. That week, I already had like six meetings lined up with like six white label app companies. And she was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? And so I need people like that. Like, like I, I set what my goal and mission is, but I need someone else to go always remind me like, you're not doing what you said you're gonna do. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's true, I wanted to chill out. And then so we went to Lowe's and we were like, we we're like trying to paint our house. <laughs> the, idea, the idea that he's just watching a video of a dragon. <laughs> he's not controlling it. He's watching Aragon. <laughs> right, but knowing what I know now, I want to take it. So they go. It's in West LA. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see if yeah, I can find them. We should all go. Honestly. Yeah, we should all go. Fucking check out. Adventures. I want to do it. What else did they reveal about your brain? I thought you said you had Asperger's and... Oh no, he was, I, I, maybe, maybe he, he said, he did confirm the ADHD and the OCD. Throw it in there. He was just in an arcade. <laughs> <laughs> no, you took a, you took a test and it says you were borderline. Oh, I'm borderline. Well, I, I, Not at the same place. Oh. Maybe, maybe. I explained it. <laughs> he said he, he said he had polio. <laughs> he got polio, he got rickets. <laughs> All the old time he was. He got dengue fever. <laughs> Some great depression yeah. shit, dude. They figured all that out yeah. from the dragon. And on his left toe, he had bubonic plague. <laughs> figured a little gay, too. Yeah. A little bit gay, just a little bit. That's, it's, that place was cool, though. <laughs> you learned a lot gay. about yourself. <laughs> that is they, interesting. Yeah. They, you really had borderline? Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh. Uh, you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Not really, really know the how to tell. Wait, Honestly. borderline what? Asperger's? <laughs> borderline Asperger's? Not borderline personality disorder, no, no. But that's, what, what? that's what he's got. Oh, you have, you okay. have a, okay, that he BPD? Know. He doesn't know who he is <laughs> every day. How does, that, like, <laughs> how does that come out? Like, how do you, what's the difference? Um, so, border, as, as I grow and mature and, and learn and, yeah, just, it I, it normally is, f I'm fine. Yeah. Um, there's, I have a few slips up once a year, whatever, where it's just, I cannot control my anger. But I'm noticing, so I didn't date or, or catch feelings for anybody for yeah, three that. years. And I recently did. And immediately, I just turned into a person that I thought was long gone. Just oh. constantly scared, constantly anxious, like worried, could not control my anger whenever I felt like unprotected or, or, or my, my trust was in danger. Wow. Um, so yeah, now I'm in therapy. Oh, and yeah. I had deluded myself into thinking maybe I don't have borderline and maybe I just have, there's this thing called CPTSD, complex uh, post-traumatic, Distress order. 
Right? Yeah, that sounds right. Sounds, um, sounds, sounds good. Sounds good. Too. <laughs> sounds professional. <laughs> but, but, like, trick but in most cases, <laughs> it's, it's typically based on trauma and environmental, and it's not like a chemical deficiency based on like just genetics and stuff. Yeah. Like Vietnamese stuff. blood though, it's got that PT. Well, every yeah. Vietnamese yeah. got borderline. Yeah. Always baked in. Yeah. yeah, you just need to ride more dragons. I think it's good. <laughs> well, I, I do want to go do that. But uh, yeah, started therapy, taking it seriously. Yeah. Past month. And That's then, cool. Um, With borderline, always comes kind of like. Depression and anxiety, yeah. so I'm prescribed. Probably gonna start taking meds. No, okay. no, don't take meds. Don't trust the Western. I take Western a lot meds. of medication, and I wish I never come did. On, I'm not taking like schizo which... meds like you. Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> they give women different meds. <laughs> seizure you know medicine. About this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, I feel like Western medication. It Put just it's suppress it, it's it just suppresses it. You know what I mean? Like you never you're never gonna get better. It's just they want to keep you sick. What's up, guys? If you do not know, we have a Patreon. I want you to click in our description and go over there and check out all the beautiful stuff we have for you. It's super duper access for only our super duper exclusive lovers like yourselves. You're gonna be getting one. Never been released director's cut every week, but not only that you get another fresh Too hot for YouTube video. We say some crazy shit on there two videos a week But not only that you get to join our discord and come chat with us direct access We're in there the whole careful boys in there jumping in dog piling on people laughing playing joking whatever and you can come talk to us directly. So if you like what we do and what we've been doing for the past 10 years, please support our Patreon and click the link below to get all the details. There's so many different tiers, you can see it when you click that. Is there an Eastern way to treat BPD? Yeah, you, you get hit harder. Yeah. <laughs> You're not. Uh, uh. Zen Buddhism, dude. Zen Buddhism? Zen Buddhism. I, I will say I haven't seen many successful, like, close friends of mine that have been on, like, antidepressants. I haven't seen a lot of successful I've never, I've never seen a successful case yet. Well, but you kind of have to work with it a lot, right? Yeah, experiment. I think there's always work that you gotta like yeah. whether you ride the dragon in the computer game or you ride it on your own. I think you gotta <laughs> you gotta ride a dragon when he though. changes the VHS tape in front of you. <laughs> that's yeah, what, keep playing, keep playing. <laughs> that's what Zen Buddhism is too. You're like you know you're meditating. It's like, Mindfulness. It's like riding when they had to switch to the tape, they gave him the mouse and he got yeah. distracted. <laughs> how does the therapist say like uh, how do they suggest managing like BPD on your own and stuff? Um, so it's it's funny that you brought up Zen Buddhism. A lot of the values kind of align. Um, mindfulness, meditation. I'm like I'm pretty new, but that's just stuff she said. So I need to learn how to apply that in the moment. Yeah. It's like I, I believe I have a good heart. I know I have a good heart, right? When I get into arguments, I'm very quick to to be able to see reason after I get over that initial reaction. But in that initial reaction where I feel unsafe or I feel angry, I can't control myself. Oh. And that ruins a lot of relationships and puts stress on a lot of relationships. So, that, is that what happened with your recent relationship? Oh, that just bad timing, bad circumstances. Oh, okay. um, she was going through her own shit too. Well, that's I, good. You recognize it, man. I yeah, I didn't recognize that. it. She left yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it forced you into this. A lot of people will go yeah, through this and yeah. be like, "Fuck her," and then they'll just be the same person oh, yeah, now. Yeah, you know I, what I'm saying? That was my first reaction. If anybody yeah. was like, "They're always wrong," not me. You know what's funny? You guys kind of have like little snippets of stories of how different you guys were back in the day, but everybody sees this outward like happy, goofy, but you guys were crazy back then? Probably. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, if you don't get out of that mindset, like, I mean like, like what you're going through, I'm just like, man, I had so many friends like that and I think I was like that too. And then if you're on the path of challenging that and changing your story, then there is a way out because there are a lot of people that have crossed over and you know they can change their triggers and the things that set them off and stuff there there's yeah. definitely a bad stigma and I so another thing I do is um shame spiraling where when I when I fuck up and and oh. get into an argument or whatever whereas normal people can accept that they fucked up and move on very quickly I will spend like probably a week just yeah. hating myself to my core wow. and and go into this mindset of like like holy fuck, I will never be healthy to anybody. Yeah. So then I had to deal with that after the initial argument. Yeah. 
Um, do you think that? <laughs> do you think that comes from like your dad just being a shitty person and always making you feel like you're a bad person? I think so. I think it's it's so deep rooted. Like growing up, I I never heard I love you once, and it was just every day was just like you did not deserve to live. Yeah. So I think it's so deep rooted that I need, honestly at this point, I don't even know if therapy will help remove yeah. that. I'm hoping it does. I actually don't like how therapy approaches therapy for men. Cause I, I think that the way therapy is shaped is based on a lot of feedback and tests from how women respond to therapy. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is like, I think the difference between male and female and how we process and overcome stuff is different um i think women i'm an unlicensed psychologist i have a bachelor's in psychology so i could talk on this shit <laughs> <laughs> i think that the pro so the process is vent and then you tackle your situation i think men need to tackle the situation and then process after mm. so in your situation it's like if you find that's probably why you're trying to find solutions, right? Because I saw this too. I, the more I talked about it with people, the more it pissed me off. Because I'm just going back into my trauma and reliving it, and I feel helpless. I'm not doing anything about it. But when I had an action plan and I started tackling certain things, and then the more I can control, like let's say I get into a fight, um, and, and if I can change how I react and I don't go back to it, and I'm like, oh, this time, I didn't hit, I just yelled. Oh, good, good, dude, all right. Next time, I won't yell, I'll just, I'll just be quiet and maybe I'll walk away. All right, good, good, good. I'm making progress. And when you can feel the progress and the results, I think that's actually a better way for guys to uh, kind of feel better each step of the way because it doesn't feel hopeless. Well, absolutely, but it's like, I think you, that you, you would be able to do that much more if you got to the core values of what triggers you. Like, yeah. why do I feel like that? I don't want to keep fucking up and, and I want to minimize the, the, the amounts of times that happens in order to learn. Yeah. So it's like, it's a combination of both. Of course, like, that is growth. That is what growth is, is being able to do differently and better next time. But what therapy helps me with is, is I can talk to her about a, a situation or why I feel like that. And she'll be able to explain with reason and with logic, like, this probably stems from this. Yeah. And then I can internalize it and be like, oh, that is why I feel like that. Yeah, I'm not totally against therapy. That's really cool. Like to be able to have someone you can just open up to and yeah. talk about it. Cause some people um, need to say it out loud. 40% of people don't have internal dialogue. So really? oh, I wish I had less, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Wait, really? Some people just go about their day and they're not- They don't have the inner person that speaks uh -huh. to them. Yeah. yeah. Like so our friend they, David So, he yeah. doesn't have internal thoughts. No. What? That's so yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's why he just yeah. has external mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people Don't say that, David. Don't say that. Just work it out. External mouth. <laughs> yeah. And just say things out loud. So that's when they say it out loud, they're listening to what they what they think. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? 40% of people. Because I was like, like you see like a bee, right? You're like, oh shit, I'm not fucking gonna sting me. I'm like, you don't there's no one warning you. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess that's probably why he's like, oh shit, that motherfucker gonna sting me! Like, he has to like say it like that. Wait, I didn't know that. <laughs> that makes so much more sense. Yeah, yeah. okay. Therapy is also very helpful because when I talk to my friends, they validate everything. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll do the craziest things and they'll be like, no, you're valid. That was okay, that was okay. You know what? And you need to leave him, girl! Yeah, but but when you're in therapy, your they'll be like, maybe, maybe don't do that, you know? So, yeah. yeah. If you have friends that will validate everything, maybe go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, that's scary, that's scary. <laughs> what was it that changed for you? Because I feel like last time you were here, you were talking about how like you had trouble feeling like intimacy or feeling close to like a partner and then with you recently dating, what was different about that? How did you find the connection? I honestly think a lot of, a big part of it was we had the same experiences growing up and maybe we just found comfort in how broken we both were. Um, which was, which allowed me to be able to step away with um, no animosity and just like, mm. it's time for us to grow and, and maybe look inwards and heal. Yeah, trauma then, bonding. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's not what trauma bonding is. It's not? No, oh. it's not. But Trauma I bonding is a when a uh, abuser abuses somebody and the, the it's almost like Stockholm Syndrome. The, 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 the victim in the relationship grows uh, attached. attached to mm. the abuser throughout those, that, those 
Oh, that's yeah. trauma bonding. Trauma that's bonding so, oh. isn't bonding over trauma? That's, that's, what, right. I, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was also very confused. That's good yeah. for <laughs> clearing that up, yeah. But what is that what is trauma called? Bonding? I don't think we like the real Useful. definition. Yeah, I'm using it as the old definition that yeah. I've been thinking that of. I'm like, you got problems, yeah. I got problems. I got problems, let's talk about it. We got problems. So all, closer all now? Asians <laughs> trauma bond with their parents, right? Because yeah, their parents yeah. whoop their ass. Oh, I love you more! That's trauma bonding, right? Yeah. Oh. Dang, Our parents. This the whole time. Damn, we should read some comments sometime, man. <laughs> Getting that shit wrong for years. Uh, another cool thing about therapy, actually, last week too, is um. So while I'm I'm going to therapy, uh, I also am getting closer to God. Oh, okay. okay. Our friend Johnny Chang, you you guys yeah, know Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what he preaches is um, don't trust your thoughts. And I was sitting in therapy, um, and she was like, imagine if you walked into this room and there's a snake. What would you do? I'm like, freak the fuck out. There's a, why is there a snake here? Imagine you come next week, outside the door, there's no snake, are you still gonna feel that panic? I was like, probably. So, she, she boiled it down to like, maybe not all, tr uh, all thoughts are supposed to be trusted. Which is the same thing Johnny always says. So it was a cool little thing to see how, how religion and science and... and there's like yeah, parallels. Yeah. I'm gonna say one caveat, I'm gonna say one caveat to that. Just because, <laughs> the Bible states that all your thoughts are evil. And that's a crazy concept to, to deal with because in his situation, he's saying, the, the therapist is saying, maybe not all, but some, right? But that some in Christianity is a slippery slope because that's when you start to depend on yourself and that's where ego comes from. <clears throat> so the Bible is constantly throw away your thoughts and trust the word. That's why when Johnny, come, when you guys sit down with him, he's always pulling a Bible verse based on whatever he's saying, because there, it's literally a manual. It's like, if you're struggling with this problem, you, you come to this book and it's gonna give you the answer. And because he's read it so many times and he has such good men mentors, <coughs> I would say that a lot of like modern day therapy or whatever it is, is just the Bible rebranded yeah, in yeah. a lot of ways. And so, and so I think that that's where it can be a slippery slope. I'm not saying therapy is bad either. I think it gives a lot of good tools, but I just, well, the yeah, thing about yeah. therapy too is there's different schools like martial arts, and that's what people don't know. It's not one. St it's like there's you have uh, cognitive behavioral, you have psychotherapy, you have all these different things, and so when people talk about it, they go, "Yeah, I have a therapist, I have a counselor, whatever." I'm always skeptical because I'm like, which school? Because I don't like um, psychotherapy. I think it's one of the most fraudulent styles of therapy. I'm in um, DBT right now. D D B uh, dialectal dialectal behavior therapy. Okay, behavioral. Okay. So, what psychotherapy is the typical what we think about? Of therapy? No. So, psychotherapy actually they um, they hypnotize hypnotize people, and it gets kooky, man. Sometimes it goes to this place where they're like, "Oh, you have trauma from your past life. It's not your not it's not your life right now." Oh, that sounds like yeah. someone we know. And then so. <laughs> they, it's been proven that sometimes they'll implant issues in people that have no trauma with their parents will muster up trauma and say, you abused me or whatever. Oh, yeah, and then they yeah, would, yeah. and they're like, wait, we, we, we never hurt you. We never did these things to you. And then they'll be, so like, I hate that kind of therapy uh, because it's just too fucking kooky. I like cognitive behavioral therapy because it's based on um conditioning mm. so it's based on repetition so it's like there's also yeah some of them they'll they'll give you medicine or whatever but it's based on like a workout plan with your mind so it's like hey if you have an irrational fear toward green mugs right and then you expose a little bit at a time <laughs> and then you feel that it's safe and then it's like it's more science-based so this is where therapy and, and psychology gets fucking weird is because it can be like magic and like culty but it can also be like just hard science like bart's data center the so, dragons I, I, I had a friend with like <laughs> severe <laughs> severe ocd and he uh and he did every therapy imaginable but it wasn't until he found the right therapist that put him in an environment mm -hmm. like put him on a, like a dirty bathroom floor made him sit through it while he's, he was like coaching him yeah. through how to handle it. So yeah. So I, that's probably cognitive behavioral. Yeah, just, yeah. Way more actionable. That's, um, that's, that's a tough thought I have to I have to deal with is like, fucking my, my, my weakest suit is romantic relationships. And that's why I was alone for three years. Cause I realized it, I wasn't healing. Um, yeah. Self isolation is not healing. Yeah. Uh, I was masking it. So now I'm like, how many people 
and how many relationships am I gonna hurt and fuck up in order to heal and get better? I mean, I, ha I had that. Like, um, my, my father left when I was 14. Um, my mom, you know, and I had never had a good relationship, so I really was isolated. And it was actually owning a dog that opened me up because uh, humans I couldn't trust. That's the same reason I got my cats, dude. Right. But animals give you unconditional love. And I think that's the thing is like, you gotta slowly open up. And if you don't risk that, you don't change. Mm -hmm. And then you get into relationships. And sometimes you're with broken women because like you're attracted to the same things and, and maybe regular good girls just don't attract you. No, she was a good girl. Okay. I'm always gonna defend her. That was me. I was, I, was, I was not attracted to regular good girls because there was nothing there that felt, and I felt like they might reject me. But I think as time progresses, you start to trust society and people again, and then you start opening up and you become more braver to these emotions. Yeah, it's just it's just time. That's all it is. Just Absolutely. trust in the process. Uh, through, throughout my, my research, like borderline, it gets better with age and along with age is experiences and more yeah. life experience and whatever. So I'm hoping, but yeah, man. There's also just no cure for it. Like I'll deal with this for the rest of my yeah. life, and that sent me on a spiral for for a while. So. Oh, is there no cure? No. Nah. There's no. There's no like pills you can take. There's no. Mm. Literally, the only thing that helps is like growing and learning how to manage it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. You just get better at it. Yeah. You're doing the work, man. Yeah. yeah. Man. Doing the work. It's like even with anger, there's more. Oh, never mind. I'll show no, you. Can. Oh. You know, you can, you can finish your time. <laughs> There's also like fear of abandonment. There's it goes so much deeper than just like oh I can't control my anger. Yeah. It's it's literally like it's changed how I view the world yeah. and relationships. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right.